Thank you. Thank you very much, and I particularly appreciate all of you who came here today because, as I think people outside the Southeast may not realize, there's a genuine gasoline shortage underway, and making a decision to come here today was a real decision about where you're going to drive this weekend. So I'm very grateful you would take the time and you'd come here. We're going to introduce the education section now, which is very, very important because education is at the heart of our ability to compete in the world market. It's at the heart of our ability to remain a strong nation for national security. We live in an age of scientific and technological change. And unless we have a strong and a sound education program, we cannot expect America to remain a successful country. Now, we're about to show you a brief clip of a movie that I want to urge every one of you to go to 2mminutes.com stands for two million minutes. And that's the four years that there are in a high school. And this movie takes you with two Indian high school students, two Chinese high school students, and two American high school students. It's done by Bob Compton, who was an entrepreneur in healthcare and has been very successful and became very concerned about the future for his children and his grandchildren and the future for our country. And so he went out on his own and made this film. It's quite remarkable. I think you'll find it very compelling. And we are delighted to be working with Bob Compton. And I hope as you see this, you'll understand better why we're so delighted also today to have Governor Romer here on behalf of Ed and 08, because education is at the heart of our ability to remain a productive, a successful, and a safe country. So if you would join me in looking at this preview of 2 Million Minutes. Um, occasionally I do homework, like over the weekend, let's see, on Monday I had to give a presentation in my macroeconomics class, and I started it on Sunday at about 4.30, so I was on the computer working on that till about 2 in the morning. Because I want to do pre-med, um, I know it's going to be a lot of studying, so um, it's not going to be as much fun. Uh, my mom has always said that college was kind of a big step. It's just where you kind of learn to balance um, free time and studying. I want to join a sorority, which obviously um, you get, you're going to party a lot and you have some fun. America is, uh, is the one country in the world that doesn't seem to recognize that it's in competition for the great minds and the capital of the world. Uh, <laughs> This is a strength in numbers. Uh, Americans aren't globally aware. They're more worried about what's happening in their community than they are in the world. Americans don't know they're competing with any than Chinese. Brains are everywhere. Discoveries can be made everywhere. And industries built on those discoveries also can be anywhere. You have to find, means you have to find A in the first equation, then substitute them. In India, once you get into this academic course and you're serious about it, you don't have much of the option to choose between academics and something else. It's either academics and nothing else. The people who are potentially losing their competitive edge are Americans.
In the fall of 2007, a controversial documentary premiered to rave reviews around the world. I'm just not the type of person that can study, you know, for 20 hours a day. Structurally, the American education system is broken. Now, it's time for a deeper look. I took uh, math, physics, chemistry, biology. Uh -huh. A poor vet. How many years of chemistry Five did you take? Chemistry. Five years of chemistry. If I'm doing my math right, it looks like they would take in the ninth grade, for example, about 15 different classes. Yeah. What are the shortcomings of the, of the state-run curriculum, in, in your view? The pressure. Uh, they have to do so well. So with all that competition and with all that study, did you feel under a lot of stress, a lot of pressure? I, I find it interesting. You find it interesting? <laughs> yeah, because... In the 10th grade, wouldn't the teachers be teaching to the test? China can't have a great education system without freedom of speech. You, how would you respond to that? Two million minutes, a deeper look at Indian education, and two million minutes, a deeper look at Chinese education. Visit 2mminutes.com for more. I really strongly urge you to go to 2mminutes.com because we're not raising our young people just to compete with each other. It's not Atlanta versus Birmingham. It is increasingly a worldwide competition in an age of enormous scientific change. And so we need to benchmark the very best and make sure that our children are, in fact, going to have the very best. It's almost as though we were preparing for the 1956 Olympics. And a team that would do really well in the 1956 Olympics would not get any medals in the 2012 Olympics. And so we have to look for economic reasons, for citizenship reasons, for national security reasons, at how we strengthen and modernize and revitalize our learning systems. And you're going to hear a lot about that in the next few minutes, and Bob Compton is one of the people who's really worked at it. I do want to say, just for one moment, so you understand the passion and the depth of commitment to education, that a little while after you've heard from Doug Schoen, you're going to hear from Governor Romer, former Democratic governor, of Colorado and the former head of the LA school system. Governor Romer flew from Los Angeles last night to be here for a few hours to share with us his passion about education, to fly back to Los Angeles for a meeting tomorrow morning. So that tells you how dedicated some people are to try to make sure we have a tripartisan approach. Democrats, Republicans, and independents working together 